All right, so let's have a little uh, deeper look into the Pro Tools control application and how we use that with the dock. So uh, just a quick introduction of the pages that we have. The first page we're looking at is the mixer page, which is very similar to the Pro Tools mixer page and gives you uh, faders. And as we can see, uh, that's controlling the faders in Pro Tools. But the great thing is, is if I choose that track, I can then control those tracks uh, using the fader on my uh, Pro Tools dock, which is a lot nicer than doing it on the screen, I think, and definitely a lot nicer than trying to do it with a mouse. The next screen that we have is the track screen. Now this track uh, screen, if I press, press play here, if I press play, you'll see that not only do we have the track names and the track colors, but we also have all of the track levels. So if I want to choose a channel based on the level on the meters, I can choose that very, very quickly and bring that down to a fader so I can control it. The new screens, uh, when you use the Pro Tools control application in conjunction with the dock, is the channel screen. So in the channel screen, I get much more detailed information about a single channel. It's the channel that I choose, and I can choose that channel in a number of ways. I've got this really handy color universe bar up the top to scroll through my whole session, and I can also scroll here to select a track. If I select a track, that track will then uh, be selected and I can from there choose an insert. That insert will bring, bring the plug up on, plug-in up on the screen and then I have a hardware control for that on my dock here and I can change that easily. From here I can also select uh, which input I want. If I select dynamics it will show me the first uh, dynamics plugin I have if I choose EQ, it will show me the first EQ plugin, as, as we saw here before. I have just this simple one band um, EQ currently. I can choose my sends, and you can see here I have a couple of sends, and that's also brought my send up on the Pro Tools screen. And from here, I can um, change my send uh, levels as well as um, having the panning as well. I can change the panning. Let's just uh, turn that off there. So we can make we can have a send. We can also, uh, as well as seeing the sends, we can make new sends. So if I go into config mode, I can select the send and choose a bus here, and then turn it on. And now I've inserted a uh, a new bus into my sends, and I've done that all from the iPad, not from Pro Tools. Similarly, I can also put in new plugins if I want to as well. Uh, let's just choose a Dynamics plugin here. And now I have inserted a new Dynamics plugin all from the iPad without going to Pro Tools and using the mouse. So it's a really quick way to control your session. From there, I have my pan. And of course, that brings my pan controls up on encoders. But the really cool thing is I can also use the touch to control the pan. So if I have Pro Tools HD in surround, I can also use that in uh, a 5.1 or 7.1 uh, a bus as well. The group page allows you to select which Pro Tools groups it's assigned to. And this is a really quick way to get tracks in and out of groups. Up until now, you've had to either select whether it's in a group from your group menu here or over in the Pro Tools window, um, choose it from the groups menu there. But now from one controller, we can very quickly select whether or not it's in a group, which is really handy when you're doing mixing and editing. And the final mix window, uh, mix section here, assigns your output. So that's the channel page. One more page that we've made is the soft keys page. In the previous uh, Pro Tools control application, you did have soft keys down the bottom here, but they are quite small. They work really well with the dock because you have buttons. But the nice way is uh, with the soft key screen, you have a really nice big uh, soft key screen to uh, assign your Yukon and keyboard shortcut controls. And in fact, let's have a quick look at the Yukon settings page. And we can see that we can make our own soft key. I'm going to go to touch screen here. 
And in this, we can assign any control that we like to show up in the various pages. Right now I'm looking at page 9, so let's uh, scroll along to page 9. And we can see that we, we have the same page on the iPad as we do in the uh, Yukon uh, control application or U control application. So for example, this key here, I could assign a new command and those commands can be a keyboard shortcut command. And the cool thing about keyboard shortcuts is that it doesn't have to just be one, you can have multiples and make a macro. So by one button, you can do multiple controls. If we choose Yukon, then we can choose a Yukon control. And basically every menu option and every window option is available under the Yukon control. The other option that we have, and I'll just get rid of this uh, Yukon control here, is to jump to another page of your shortcut keys or to assign a wheel control so that you can use the wheel in conjunc conjunction with the button to do things like clip gain and other parameters that you can control by the jog wheel. So that's how you can build your own set of really nice soft keys to work with your dock or just with the, uh, the iPad app if that's all that you've got. So that's a little closer look at the uh, iPad. There's a, one other thing that I wanted to show you that's really nice, I think, is that using your U-Control uh, application, you can actually make layouts. So, for example, if you're in a music session, you could have a drum layout, a guitar layout, a vocal layout, so that you can switch between different fader sets really quickly. The nice thing is, is that you can also switch between your layouts from the iPad application as well. So you can switch between your various layouts from here and that will change your controller if you have one, your Artist Mix or S3 to the layout that you've chosen from here. So in this compact unit, we've got a lot of really, really, really good control. We've got encoders and faders and a really nice, using the iPad, a really nice touch screen to have great control over Pro Tools instead of using a keyboard and mouse. So we've had a look at using the dock by itself, which of course is really powerful. But the great thing about using the dock in, uh, along with an S3 or an Artist Mix is it gives you a lot more control over what the, the other faders are doing. For example, a, a really easy uh, thing to see is if I choose a channel that's currently not displayed on the surface, the surface can, if I set it that way, automatically bank so that the current view in Pro Tools matches on my console as well as putting the selected fader as a kind of like a master selected fader on my dock. So I can either assign any channel to the dock or I could keep this as my master fader only. So this becomes kind of like a master section with your faders or it can be your attention channel. The other great thing with using this with another controller is while I can select tracks in here, I can also select which track I want on my attention fader from the console as well. So when I select the fader on the console, it then comes across to my dock. So using these in conjunction, I get a lot more control and flexibility about how I want to use these faders and this fader. The other thing that's really nice, as I mentioned uh, in a previous video, I've selected some, made some different layouts in here, and now I can select those layouts uh, from my Pro Tools control here. So while an S3 actually allows you to switch these layouts from the surface, if you have an Artist Mix, for example, this gives you a really great way of switching between the layouts that you've made. So once again, even if you have a really big session, even if you only have 8 or 16 faders, you can still control a lot of different groups. So that's a really nice way that these two things work together. And also, as I said before, now we're in channel mode. Again, anything that I select, I'll just go back to nudging banking mode here. Anything that I select on here will now become my channel mode. So I kind of have a master section for my S3 right here. So that's a really nice way of combining the two things together, together to give you much more control.